Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I have a relatively quick video for you. I've got a couple of boxes that were sent to me by a viewer of the channel that contain some parts for a piece of equipment that I have that, as far as I can tell, they are no longer available. Basically, unobtainium. I did not think I would ever get these parts unless I just made them myself from scratch. So I have not opened these boxes yet. We are going to open them up, you know, see what's inside and install them if we can. I've got some light machine work that I want to share with you as well, and potentially if we have time, an update on my wife's 1986 crew cab. I've been doing a few things to it, and I want to share with you where I'm at on, on that project. So thank you for watching, and let's get started tearing into these boxes. It's like it's Christmas. So if you've watched the channel here recently, you'll know that I have a Brown Sharp 618 MicroMaster surface grinder. It's the newest piece of equipment to me in the shop. Well, a viewer of the channel, his name is Keith Kruger. He contacted me via message, sent me a photo of a machine exactly like this, and he said, do you need anything off of this piece of equipment? Is yours missing anything? Do you need any spare parts? Whatever. Well, Keith had bought one exactly like this, and unfortunately, on the way home on the trailer, it the straps worked loose and it just bit the dust and pretty much totaled the machine, unfortunately. And before he sent it off to the big machine shop in the sky, which is the scrap yard. He said, if you see anything on it, let me know. I'll send it to you. And I appreciate it, so thank you, Keith. It did have some parts on it that this one is missing. So let me show you the boxes that Keith sent me, and uh, we'll see if we can't get them installed after I let Cora in, because I can hear her slightly scratching on the door. Oh, look what I got. Oh, oh. Get it, get it. Oh, goodness. So Keith works at a tool and die shop in a, uh, it's not a vacuum, it's a vacuum forming. You know, they make molds and stuff like that for, uh, you know, like uh, drink cups and stuff like that. Pretty neat, he sent me a lot of photos and I really appreciate him going through all the trouble to send me this stuff. So let's uh, start tearing these open and I'll show you. What's inside? If I can figure out where to open. Oh, there it is. How to open it. So I have not opened these. Wow, he did a great job packing them up. Foam and stuff in there. There is a big shield. Here is a wheel cover. The ends for the bottom of the table. That big old heavy bracket there that I think bolts for the coolant system. There's another piece of the end of the table. So here's the second box. I'm tearing into it. Man, he did a great job packing this up. That Pretty thorough. The shipping companies around me, man, they they'll break stuff that you would not think would be breakable, but I tell you they can. There. So what Keith sent is all of the coolant shielding the spark guards and coolant splash guards that came on this machine factory. And if you see this machine, it had none of that when I got it. So I know that Monarch is still in business and that they will make you just about anything you need for by any Monarch lathe that was made. But believe me, it's at a pretty high cost. So the only way to get the shielding for this, and you can see on this table there is zero Shielding. Almost every grinder I've ever seen at least has one here. You know, because we'll throw stuff this way. But full coolant shielding for this, you're either going to have to buy a complete machine just like this that happens to have the coolant um, coolant system on it that you need, or you're going to make it yourself. So I guess got pretty lucky here and found an old machine that had what I needed. So this machine either never had one on this side or somebody put some, what looks like, uh, plugs in here to keep those th thread holes from filling up. Looks like some little set screws. 
So that was that was good, I guess. So I was fully intending on making, you know, just making a set of these, but man, it's so much better to get the opportunity to use factory made cooling shields on this thing. You know, they just, they knew what they were doing when they made them. I'd just be hoping I got it right. I built them. Yeah, it's some good heavy stuff right there. Looks like eighth inch sheet metal. I'll start off with the two ends. Let's see if, if that's the right order in which this thing goes together. Just leave everything kind of loose for now because it adjusts. So I would say it's a good idea to clean everything up before you put it on. But yeah, I don't have time for that. And it would just get right back dirty in no time flat. So we'll just not and say we did. So this looks like the back shield. So it slides in on one side and then bolts on the other, which is pretty nice. It's almost like it was made for this machine. Because it was. So this, that's quite a heavy piece there. So it's supposed to slide in on that side. Just like that. Oh, it's gonna slide in on this side too. There it goes. Just like that. So to get factory shielding, it's just, it's rare. Let's just say that. Unless your machine came with it, chances of getting it are really low. So I'm super glad to get this. So if you look outside, you'll see lots of color on the leaves, and it's been like that for a, for a few weeks now. We're also getting some much needed rain. We haven't had any good rain here in, in quite some time, so it's pretty dang dry outside. Our creek hasn't ran strong all summer long, so uh, a little rain won't hurt, that's for sure. So there we go, check that out. Six bolts is all it took to install this, quick and easy. Just wanted to show you know, getting a, the rare occurrence of getting factory parts for a piece of equipment of this age. It just doesn't happen that often. I love the construction. This thing is very well made, and I'm telling you, it would probably take me two days to fabricate one from scratch to the level that this thing, it really is. So I like the way that that folds out of the way. It's just really nice. So every time I would use this machine before, you know, I had just makeshift stuff stacked around there to try to help, but I would have a big coolant ring on the floor. So getting this, is it's a big deal for me. I'm very thankful for that. So thank you, Keith. I appreciate that. Having the factory coolant shields for this is a, is a nice thing. So over here on the workbench, I have some parts that I need to replicate. Now we're going to go through the parts that I'm going to make pretty quickly, but I do want to show you all of these little parts that I'm going to make and, and how I plan to do it. So let me get you in here close. I'll show you the pieces that I got to make and why and what I've already started on, and then we'll get started making them. So what I have here is a shifter linkage. This is a part that I cannot find and to buy anywhere. So I have to make this. This was borrowed from my brother off of a pickup truck and I need to make an identical, basically, other than the rusty part, replica of this. So I'm gonna be making the spring. I'll show you how I make that. I gotta make this bushing here and I gotta make this adapter adjustable piece here this little round piece so we'll pull it off here i'll show you and then i'll show you the pieces that i've already made and then what we're going to be making all of our little pieces out of so you can see i've already made this piece here it's there's nothing to this other than heating and bending i welded on this bracket here and this washer here so this piece is already made i've also already made the majority of this linkage rod here you can see i've got a got it right here so that's made other than the little end piece. I gotta make that as well. Now 
Now what I'm going to be making, this piece here, this piece here, and this piece here is a piece of Delrin for the bushing, a piece of 4140 for our little adapter adjustable portion there. And then to make the spring, what I'm going to be using, and this is not ideal, but I'm going to be using a piece of 1 16th inch stainless steel TIG welding rod because, you know, yeah, I could buy this spring, but I can also make it. And it, in practice, this thing doesn't do much springing, so I'm not worried about this breaking or anything. So when I say shifter linkage, I mean it's the linkage that goes from, you know, reverse neutral drive shifter down to the transmission um, and this is going to be going on Elizabeth's truck because I didn't get it with the truck and I just cannot find this stuff to buy anywhere. Maybe you could go to a junkyard and find it but you know I can also make it. So let's start off with making our spring. Now I'm using stainless which is not it's not the best spring material but really all this does is hold a little bit of tension on that part and doesn't do much springing at all. So I've got my mandrel here. You gotta be careful winding springs on the lathe. It is kind of a careful, kind of a dangerous thing. So I'm just gonna hold my mandrel, which is the exact same size as the part that the spring has to slip over in the end, and it will spring back some and give me, should give me the right clearance. At least I believe that it will once, you know, once I pull it off the mandrel. So I gotta clamp it with some vice grips. And uh, put this lathe in low gear. You'll see, I'll show you. A lot of you have probably seen this done before. So I've got a pair of vice grips, I'm gonna put that on the end of my wire. And that pull. Just, you know, let it wrap around there. And I'm just going to keep the coil real tight. And then once I run out of wire here, I can use my hands to pull it and stretch it to the, to the length that I want. our spring. Just a little bit of cleaning up. That'll do what we want it to do. There is our spring. I'll just clean this up just a little bit. I'll take this over to the grinder, flatten out the, uh, the ends on it. And there we go. So all I'm doing over there is just flattening the end of the spring so it, so it sets flat. Now obviously stainless is not a great material for a spring. But all this thing does is just hold a little bit of pressure on that part. So this will work and last probably longer than I'm alive. All right, so now let's make this piece here, which slides in here, bolts on, has a washer here. And this also, this bolt goes all the way through into the inside of that hole 
and it locks the shaft that goes through that hole. It's, a, it's an adjustable pivot, I guess you'd say. So we're starting off with material that is the same diameter, final diameter as our part needs to be. My plan to make this is to just stick this in the lathe. We'll make our stepped section and we'll part it off. We'll take this over to the milling machine. We will punch our 3 8 hole through it. Then we'll come back, stick it back in the lathe to bore and drill, or to drill and tap the 5 16 18 thread hole that's through here. And the reason why I'm drilling and tapping it last is because I want that hole to be there. That way I can pass that tap cleanly into that hole and get a nice finished thread all the way out to the end. I mean, I guess you could drill it and tap it and then go drill the hole, but I'd rather not drill through a hole crosswise in this. It's just, you know, there's a couple ways you can do it, but that, that's what I'm going to do. So all we got to do is make our step and part it off. So here's a look at our tool bit. It is just a 90 degree, well, less than 90. It's a high speed steel. So we're going to be going down from three quarters of an inch down to 625 thousandths, down to five eighths of an inch. So just this short section here, all I'm going to do is set up an end stop on the, on the carriage here. That way I can just machine up to my line because really that's all I need to do. And it should be good enough and we'll park this thing off. Five thousandths is what we're going to pull off of this. So touch zero my cross slide here. And we'll just pull off fifty. Another fifty. size as the hole so we'll pull off just a little more it needs to pivot this needs to pivot in that hole so we need a little clearance so we'll just pull off six thousandths fine now let's part it off
So we're over here in the do-all milling machine. I've got a, the stock here, just three quarter of an inch stock. And all I'm gonna do is use this stock because that's the same diameter of our part to get center. I have to drill a hole through the center of this. So I've got my edge finder in a drill chuck, pretty much just hand tight, which is perfectly fine for what I'm gonna be doing. Now this machine is a heavy, heavy duty machine. Not ideal for really fine watchmaking. But I like it because it's got such a large work envelope and you can do quite a bit on it. So I'm just going to come in and the edge finder to find the edge. <laughs> it's it does its thing right there. I'll zero my dial. Then come over half the thickness of the edge finder and half the thickness of the part. And I'll be on center when I drill the hole you know, through our piece here. That is a zero. So we need to come over 250 thousandths. Two fifty, and then half of our part, which is three quarters of an inch, so that'd be 375 thousandths. Right there.
stick this back in the lathe and do our 5 16 18 hole right through the through the front there. So for our 5 16 18 threaded hole that's going to go in the center, that's going to be a F, letter F drill, out of our index there. So just like any other time, I'm going to put a spotting drill in there, spot it, just going to straight up drill it with a F drill and then come back put our tap in the chuck and just power tap it really quick get this done Do the tapping. And I'll just finish it. I don't want to run that tap in too far, although a lot of times tap will just slip in the chuck because the taps are so hard. Those and those hardened jaws just don't hold them all that well. I'll just run that in all the way with a handle. So we got our spring made, just like the old one. Got our pivoting lock bracket made. You see this allows this to go in and out and then lock. And it also allows this to pivot. Now we need to make this bushing. It's just a hard plastic bushing that slides up on the shaft here. This has got a radius on the, out, on the outer edge that sets in a pocket on the frame rail and allows this to kind of move in and out Allows, allows it to twist and the plastic isolates it and keeps it from rattling. So we need to replicate this as close as we can. And what I'm going to use is a piece of Delrin. This is very hard. Whatever it is, really hard piece of plastic. Uh, Delrin is very similar. Real hard. So we're going to take that over the lathe and see if we can make that. Now the radius, there is a radius on this outside edge. And as best as I can tell, it is a 3 eighths of an inch radius. Can you see that? Can you see it? As close as I can get it to match. Check out this gauge. I've got the matching set here, the smaller, smaller sizes. I like this design radius gauge. Uh, most of the time you, you get the leafs like this with your concave and convex, you know, one side or the other. This one is all in one. So if you look, we got a 3 8 radius. This is 3 8 gauge, 3 8 radius here, 3 8 radius here. 3 8 radius here, here, and here. So a really, really nice gauge. So that looks close to me. So let's go over to the lathe and see if we can't burn out this bushing super quick. Because that's what I need to do it, super quick. I'm running out of time. All right, so I was digging through my high-speed steel toolbox, and I got lucky and found one that already has a 3 8 radius on it. It's not exactly the right shape that I need, but you get the idea. It will give me the radius that I need on, on our bushing. So let me give you the quick order of operations. I'm going to drill the hole first. I'll come in, I'll turn our piece of Delrin down to the major OD, which is 101 inch, 24 thousandths, or 20, right on 26 mil. 
Then I will come in with a parting blade and part the section out that matches what we got here. So let's uh, blast down the OD and drill it and put this form tool in to give us our radius and then part it out. All right, so a 2964 drill, that'll give us about 12, 15 thousandths clearance, plenty enough. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be real tight on that the, the shaft that it slides over. I want it to just give it some support. I love machining Delrin. It just machines so well. All right. Good enough for the hole. So now I'm gonna load a tool up here and then turn down to our major OD which is one inch, 25 thousandths. Speed this thing up. Love the way Delrin smells when you machine it. See, I've got my radius tool in here. I took this over the lathe and I knocked this side of the radius off. Just clean the tool up a little bit. And all I'm going to do is plunge this in until our outside diameter here hits the largest part or the deepest part of the radius here. And then our part will be done other than parting it off. That may be a little fast. Let me slow it down just a little. So check out that beautiful set of linkage. Now, yes, I could have probably went to a junkyard, laid in the mud, pulled it off some old rusty truck. I could not find it anywhere to buy new, 
So I was pretty much left with those two options, either making it myself or going and finding it to, you know, at a junkyard. And by the time I loaded my tools up, found a place that had it, went there, laid in the mud, pulled it off, I could have, and I did. I spent the time and I made it myself and enjoyed my pieces of equipment. And that's the beautiful thing about machine tools is it gives you the freedom to make your own stuff, even if you cannot buy it. So I think our little bushing, our little spring, our little lock, all this stuff is gonna work really good. Although I did not show you the entire process of bending this metal, you get the idea. You know, pretty straightforward. And I am glad that it is basically done, other than my little end piece here that I gotta make. But we are gonna pause on this for now. You see, it's pretty much done. And I wanna show you before we part quickly, Elizabeth's crew cab and the updates that I have for you on it, because it's basically done. Can I see it? Can I see it? Let me see it. Let me see it. Oh, get it. Oh, get it. Shake the daylights out of it. So we want to share what we've done with Johnny. We got him done pretty much. Been driving him a whole lot. Pulled a couple of things with it and he's done really good. So come on over and look. So we've got the windows tinted, got the interior done. Steve's brother done that. Done a really good job. Love it. <laughs> so this truck turned out so much nicer than what I was originally thinking that it would, but we really did focus most of our effort on the interior of this thing. We did want it nice on the inside. It definitely turned out nice. We didn't try to make it perfect, but you know, just new new cloth and stuff that was, you know, infested with the mysis. Uh, we had to do away with all that and then cracked or broke stuff we replaced. But other than that, you know, it looks nice on the inside. Let me show you the back. It looks good as well. So the back looks the same as the front. We just want to show you it's completed as well. Good. It's real good. So just to get everybody up to speed who's not, I built this truck for my wife Elizabeth probably, I don't know, over the last five months. Well, we pulled it out of a field where it had set for like 12 or 15 years, quite a long time. So we pulled it out of the field, uh, arranged a LS engine, swapped that in here. It didn't have an engine or transmission when we bought it. It was basically a, a parts truck. And then we went over the interior. I did exhaust on it and uh, pretty much uh, that's it. We've driven it about 2000 miles since I would consider it done, which it's not done. I don't know if they ever are, but it's close, done enough to use. Uh, Elizabeth has driven it almost as much as I have. And uh, she really likes, she likes it. She feels comfortable driving this thing. It has pulled a couple heavy trailers and has done surprisingly well. I was a little bit worried. Uh, we put a 60LS in this thing uh, from a 2003 pickup truck, just old scrap uh, salt truck that we got, and a 4L80E transmission. I was a bit, I don't know, a bit concerned that it wouldn't be quite enough engine for this big a truck pulling the trailers and the weight that we wanted to pull, but it it's really done phenomenal. It runs great and uh, pulls itself and trailer really well. It's not a big diesel, but it does do pretty good. Let me show you the engine in this thing in case some of you haven't seen it and the swap that uh, I did on it. Say hi. Quick look at Daisy May. The sausage? Yeah, she's got old sausage body. <laughs> this is my son's dog. She's a sweetie. She's Lab and something else. I don't know. We uh, got her from beagle. a Lab and Beagle. We picked her up from a shelter. <laughs> uh, she was a puppy. She's a sweetie. We've had her for a while now. She is. She's mischief. She's into mischief a lot though. She's a good dog. Now let's look. So there's a look at the engine that we plopped down in this thing. It is a bone stock. 
Actually, it's not bone stock. It is a LS60 with headers and an intake, and that is literally it. Other than that, it is bone stock. Holds 40-something pounds of oil pressure, which is not super high, but it's fine going down the road. It does not use any oil. You know, it's got plenty of power. Um, this truck originally came with a 454 big block. So this is 366 cubic inches, so quite a bit smaller. It does like to run much higher in the RPM range, pulling the same load than a big block would uh, to get the same outcome, but it is perfectly happy pulling the load, it, pretty much any load that this truck is legally able to pull. Um, you know, weight-wise, this has no problem, I don't think, doing it. Uh, and it has no problem stopping a load either. The brakes are awesome on this truck. So first swap that I done, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. It went extremely well, and we've gotten over the nervous stages of a build where, you know, you wonder if you're going to make it to town and back. Elizabeth's perfectly confident to jump in this thing and run off, you know, a couple hundred miles to go meet family or whatever in this with, uh, she has no reservations, you know, just fired up and go. So it's been awesome, pretty much trouble free uh, since, the, since the day we've uh, got it out on the road. Really happy with this thing. All right, guys, that's all I have time for this week. And I do want to apologize for my absence from the channel here the last few weeks. In fact, actually, it's been, you know, couple few months or so. It's been a little sporadic of my posting. But I've been trying to focus my time, the time that I have after work and stuff, with my family. It's been pretty chaotic around here lately. We've had a lot going on, both really good and some of it, you know, unfortunate. But hopefully everything will just level out soon and uh, get back to normal. I've had a busy, you know, busy time with my day job as well. Things have been changing there as well also, and I'm hoping that all of that will just get squared away here soon and I can get back to my regularly scheduled videos. So that is it. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So that is it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.